You may be seated. Uh, please begin turning in your Bibles to Psalm 102. If you don't have a Bible, these men walking down the aisle would love to hand you one. Please raise your hand and they will be sure that you get one. And if you don't ha own a Bible, this one is your gift today. Um, I'll begin reading in Psalm 102, verse 1. Let's begin. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry for help come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. The psalmist is crying out to Yahweh in the midst of distress to hear his prayer and not to hide from him. In the first 11 verses, we learn that his body is broken and weak. He is lonely. His heart is in despair. And his enemies are against him. He actually sees his affliction as God's wrath against him. The psalmist then turns his gaze to God's attributes, specifically his eternal nature in verse 11. Let's read. My days are like a lengthened shadow, and I wither away like grass. But you, O Lord, abide forever in your name to all generations. In the next several verses, he takes confidence in Yahweh's faithfulness to his people and his promise to one day appear in glory to rescue his people and to rebuild Jerusalem. In verse 17, he also affirms the truth that, perhaps contrary to his feelings, that God does hear those who genuinely cry out to him. The psalmist informs his own thinking with what he knows to be true of God. And in verse 25, he returns again to God's eternal nature and sovereignty for comfort. Read with me now, starting in verse 25. Of old, you founded the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. And even they will perish, but you endure. And all of them will wear out like a garment. Like clothing, you will change them, and they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will not come to an end. The children of your servants will continue and their descendants will be established before you. Yahweh, the creator of the heavens and the earth, remains the same even when the creation wears out. And when he appears, he will change everything. And the psalmist knows that God's servants will be there in his presence because God doesn't change. He will not abandon his promise either. So turn now, if you can, to your New Testament, to Hebrews chapter 1, where we see this same verse um, come up again. So Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers in the prophets in many portions and in many ways, in these last days has spoken to us in his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things through whom he also made the world. And he is the radiance of his glory and the exact representation of his nature and upholds all things by the word of his power. And when he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. The world was made through the sun and in the sun we see the outward, radiant, visible expression of the glory of God. He exactly represents the nature of the majesty on high. His nature isn't just similar to the Father's. It, isn't, it is exactly the same as the Father's. There is a distinction in the persons of the Father and the Son, but there is no distinction in the nature that they possess. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, each fully possess this divine nature. And Hebrews 1 proclaims the superiority of the Son by appealing to several Old Testament passages. So look down to verse 10, which our author here ascribes to the Son. And you, Lord, in the beginnings laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain, and they will become old like a garment, but, and like a mantle you will roll them up. Like a garment they will also be changed. But you are the same and your years will not come to an end. Right, this is a direct quotation from Psalm 102. The writer of Hebrews takes the psalmist's words which are directed towards Yahweh and he applies them to the Son. And while the psalmist probably didn't have it in his mind to specifically address the Son, we see that what was ascribed to God generally in Psalm 102 can also be said specifically of God's Son. 
Since God does not change, neither does the Son change. The Son never became God. He has always been God. And the Father and Son share the same nature, the same attributes. And this Son, who upholds all things by the word of his power, is also he who in Hebrews 1.3, which we read, made purification for our sins. We were his enemies, but he took upon himself the nature of man, and without ever relinquishing or changing his own divine nature, in this miraculous union of the divine and human natures, Jesus lived as a man, but without sin. And he then died to bear the sins of all who would believe and trust in him alone for salvation. And so when we take communion this morning, we remember this Jesus, the son who was born and who created everything, who died but never ceased to uphold the world, he who rose and he who has it in himself to give life. When you see the character of God in your Old Testaments, do you rejoice in your Savior? As you behold who God is on the pages of your Old Testament, you are beholding the same character, the same nature of our Savior, Jesus. And what a great and glorious Son we gather here to remember today. So do you know this, Jesus? Not just the infant in nativity plays, but the almighty, unchanging creator who humbled himself to die in the place of sinners so that we might be reconciled to him. Believer, if there is sin in your life that you have not confessed of, repent, turn from your sin today, and worship Jesus with us this morning as you reflect upon the God-man who paid the penalty for your sin on the cross. And if you are not a follower of Jesus Christ, we'd ask that when the plate comes to you that you would just simply pass it by uh, without taking the bread and the cup. But just know that we're, we're glad that you're here today and... Um, we plead with you to turn to Jesus today. Um, we would love to speak with you. Anyone that you've seen up here on the stage today, or you can find one of our pastors at the information table after the service. And we would love to speak with you about what it means to know this God. Um, men in the back, please come forward and serve us. Um, believers, remember this Jesus this morning. And um, when you're ready, go ahead and take communion on your own this morning.